Blue Zoo Spokane opened its doors today to local kids who are visually impaired, and the people who went told us the experience was both educational and impactful. It's been a soggy start to the weekend across the inland northwest, and more rain is on the way. And newly released surveillance video from a Portland, Oregon high school shows the moment a coach disarmed a student and then embraced him. We'll have more of that dramatic video tonight. Well, it was a, certainly a dreary start to the weekend, and it's not expected to clear up for a while, but at least it's not snow here in Spokane. Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. There is snow in the mountains and a flood advisory down in the Pullman area. Meantime, here in Spokane, we're seeing rain, rain, and more rain. Let's get straight to meteorologist Michelle Bossom. Michelle, does tomorrow look any better than today? It looks a little bit better, not really any warmer and not any sunnier, but I think it's going to be a little bit less soggy, at least for the first half of the day. So we will get a break from the rain, uh, though it is going to be rather brief. But today's rainfall totals are pretty impressive, considering we're not done yet. Spokane, about a third of an inch. Coeur d'Alene, about the same. And in Pullman, wow, it has been a soggy day there. An inch of rain, and they're still going to see some wet weather this evening. Moses Lake and Wenatchee also picking about a third of an inch. Wenatchee actually setting a record for rainfall for today. And you can see on satellite and radar still plenty of wet weather, mainly across far southeastern Washington, south of I-90. We are seeing kind of a clearing trend. Well, not clearing skies, but drying trend, I should say, in Spokane and areas to our west and north. So I think if you do have plans to be out and about this evening, things are going to look a little bit drier. Flood advisory is in effect across the Washington and Idaho Palouse until 830 this evening. You can see some ponding on area roadways, especially in those poor drainage areas. Things will be improving later tonight and tomorrow morning. Snow is falling in the higher elevations though, and winter weather advisories continue until early tomorrow morning across the central Panhandle Mountains and the Blues. They could be picking up as much as eight inches of snow in some locations. Well, temperature wise, of course, with the rain and the gray clouds, it has not been warm today. Lower 40s right now in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. A little bit better out in Wenatchee and Moses Lake, 50 degrees, but chilly down across the Palouse where they did actually have a little bit of wet snow in the Pullman area earlier this afternoon, not expecting any additional snow tonight. Here's a look at the next 12 hours. Temperatures in the 40s. It's going to be gray, but maybe not as wet. And taking a look at the next three days, we do expect more rain tomorrow, but not until tomorrow afternoon. So the morning should be drier. Occasional showers on Monday, and then we'll dry it out on Tuesday and warm it up a little bit to the upper 50s. Sounds good, Michelle. Thank you very much. Well, today was the last day to take advantage of the free debris disposal at the Waste to Energy facility. They offered free disposal for a week to help people clear out the tree debris left over by last week's snowstorm. And they've certainly been slammed. Well, they close at 5 o'clock tonight, so if you didn't make it out there, you'll now have to pay. Washington State's own apple variety will soon be available to buy in local grocery stores. The Cosmic Crisp Apple is the first apple ever bred in Washington State, even though we grow the majority of the country's apples. Growers have already planted 12 million Cosmic Crisp apple trees. While only 450,000 boxes will be available for sale this year, that jumps to more than 2 million boxes in 2020, then more than 21 million boxes by 2026. They'll be in grocery stores starting on December 1st. From apples to grapes, harvest season has begun in California's Napa Valley, but the $160 billion wine industry could dry up if a climate change isn't addressed. A vineyard manager in the valley and a researcher from UC Davis, they say the area has heated up by nearly two degrees a year. Might not sound like much, but wine growers say it's enough to eventually make Cabernet grapes go extinct. The big deal is the erratic nature that we have with climate here. We have bugs we never heard of. We have diseases we never heard of before. Uh, we have, we, we've changed the way we farm because of it. Researchers with UC Davis partner with vineyards in the Napa Valley to test 11 different projects aimed with creating more resilient strains of Cabernet. They are testing 100 different combinations, but it'll take at least six years to yield results. To some national news now, the Trump administration imposed a fresh round of tariffs on European goods this week. They impact $7.5 billion worth of products, including wine, liquor and Parmesan cheese. Cheese producers say their traditional product and its sale in the U.S. is now under threat. Cheese from almost every country in the EU will be hit with a 25% duty. Other products on the list include clams, coffee, German tools, and sweaters from the U.K. A prayer vigil is underway for Sarah McNeese tonight. It began at 6 o'clock just a few minutes ago. 
Krem 2's Brandon Jones is there now and Brandon Sarah hasn't been has been missing rather for a week and a half. What's the latest tonight? Yeah, Mark, it's been over 10 days now since Sarah McNeese was first reported missing. And as you can imagine, her family is extremely distraught over this whole situation. And they're, they're searching for any type of clues that will bring her home safely. Police are still investigating the situation, but there hasn't been much information that has been released since then. The, the church I'm standing in front of right now, they're currently holding a vigil, just trying to spread information, try to get any type of word out there that you know, that could hopefully bring her back closer to home and bring her home safely. Right now, they're just, you know, putting any type of positive energy into the world right now and just hoping for the best. I'm going to going to walk in the, the church in just a few minutes and see what else I can talk to them about, see if they have anything that has been new. I'm going to continue to monitor the situation and, and update you all. Mark. All right, Brandon, sounds good. Hoping for the best for that family. Newly released video shows the moment an Oregon high school security guard and football coach disarmed a student who brought a loaded shotgun to school back in May. Surveillance video shows the Park Rose High School student walk into the school with the shotgun hidden underneath something in his arms. He nearly bumps into the football coach, but they narrowly miss each other. Seconds later, you can see the panic as students run from a classroom. Then we see the coach walk out of the classroom with the shotgun in one hand and the student in the other. As he hands that gun to a different teacher who calls 911, the coach embraces the student. Minutes later, police enter the building with their guns drawn. They found the student and the coach sitting in the hallway together. Earlier this month, the judge sentenced the student to 36 months of probation, as well as immediate mental health and substance abuse treatment. Incredible video. The Blue Zoo Aquarium opened its doors to children who are visually impaired to interact and learn about different animals today. Krem 2's Brandon Jones was there to experience today with those students and he found out what they enjoyed most. Hands on learning had a deeper meaning this morning at the Blue Zoo Aquarium. A group of blind and low vision students were able to spend some time with animals and get an educational experience on the roles they played in their respective environments. I didn't really know about all sorts of fish and I didn't really know about like iguanas or like stingrays and stuff, but I learned a lot about it. Blue Zoo has had sensory days in the past, but this was the first time working with this group of students. Parents who brought their kids out appreciated the effort and believed the experience was beneficial. Actually just being around the animals itself and learning about something other than the human species is very educational and soothing for them. Any questions the students had were answered right away by staff that were just as happy interacting with them as they were with the animals. To look at a child's face and to see them inspired by holding, an, uh, holding a starfish or petting a stingray for the very first time, I mean, it's incredible. So I'm just walking out of Blue Zoo and I'm not sure who had a better time, the kids or myself, but what I do know is that it was a great environment in there. I mean, they got to hang out, pet stingrays, go into all different types of rooms with reptiles, birds, everything. The whole atmosphere was just amazing. On top of learning about the animals, students got the chance to feed some of them as well. In Spokane, Brandon Jones, Crim 2 News. She presided over the high-profile trial of former USA Gymnastics team Dr. Larry Nasser and allowed more than 100 victims to address him in the courtroom. Judge Rosemary Aquilina was recently in Spokane, where she was the speaker at the YM, YWCA rather, Women of Achievement Awards luncheon. Some say the judge was grandstanding for the media attention during that trial. She says those people don't know her. But as Krem 2's Whitney Ward talked with the judge, she found out there's much more to her than just the Larry Nasser case. She's also a mother, an author, a teacher, and a role model. Watch Whitney's interview with the judge coming up on Monday at 6 o'clock. Still ahead tonight, new developments on the Syria-Turkey ceasefire. Kurdish forces are accusing Turkey of failing to abide by the ceasefire brokered by the U.S. And now they want the Trump administration to take responsibility for reinforcing it.